what up everybody? Special G. It's Lady T. And yes. I choose to believe. She choose to believe. I choose to believe. You know, when we think about, we look at situations, we look at things that we see and we say, well, this is just my, this is my, ra my reality. This is what has been destined for my life. And then when you say that, you're speaking not no faith. Yes. When you say that this is my reality, this is what I've been destined to come to, you're not speaking any kind of faith in God. So yeah. so really, you're not allowing him to be able to move in your situation. What you have to do is you have to go ahead and turn that thing around, yes. look at it and say, well, God, I know what you promised me. I know you told me that I was going to prosper. I know you told me that I was going to be filled with joy. So I choose to believe what you say. I I, the doctor and his uh, diagnosis, they can have it. Yes. I choose to believe that I am healed. I choose to believe that I am whole, that I'm happy, and that I'm walking in the way of God. That's what I choose to believe. Yes, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. You, you, you can choose. Mm -hmm. uh, happiness is a choice. Paul, Paul teaches us that in Acts 26, that I have the choice. I have the right to choose. That's one of my rights as a as a believer, as a kingdom citizen. I have a choice, and I I, I, I want to admonish you of this very fact that every day of your life you are going to have to make choices. Every day. Don't think that yesterday's uh, uh, choice will uh, affect today. It's just like every day you find new mercies and new grace every day. The Bible is actually suggesting to you that every day you're going to have to make a choice. Why am I getting new graces every day? Because I'm going to have to uh, make the choice to use it. I'm going to have to make the choice that 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 I'm going to believe in spite of the, the circumstances that I'm facing in mm -hmm. my life. You, you, you have been given the right to choose happiness. To choose to believe what God has already declared. I want you to know that without a shadow of a doubt. That God has declared over your life. And you will see the goodness of the Lord. I, 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 I say this quite often. You're going to have to believe to see. Yes. I choose to believe to see. That's what David said. Yeah. David said, yeah. I had fainted. Yeah. Or or I would be in a very fainting, uh, daunting uh, outlook if I did not believe to see the goodness of the Lord, especially in the land that I'm living in and right. the time that I'm living yeah. in right yeah. now because yeah. it does not look good. Come on. It does not look good. But we're excited today because God is doing something incredible and you are included in the incredible. Mm. God is doing something incredible and you are incredible included because you are incredible wow. he used incredible people to do incredible things because he built you with incredible stuff mm. that's who you are you are wonderfully made you are made in the image of an almighty god so watch this watch your mouth because the god that you are made in the image of began to create with what he said come on he gave you a great example he said start creating by what you continue to say this is your season to speak it out Speak it out so you can walk it out. Hey, Pastor Stevie Robinson, bless you, man. Bless you, man. Bless you, man. We are excited today. I need you to start sharing this with people. Renee Davenport is in the house. Who else is in the house? I got I to gotta see who these people are in here. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. We're, we're, we're waiting for people to come in. I, I, I got a word on today. I'm going to tell you, this is going to bless. I believe that this word on today is going to bless your heart. I believe that God is going to say something. He's unlocking lives right now. Your life is 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 ready. You are prepped to be unlocked. You, mm. and, uh, and also released. Unlocked and released. Not only unlocked, but released. There's a pushing. Uh, when the doors come unlocked, there's going to be a pushing in your back to push you outside of the cage that have held you for years it's about to be a pushing you're about to be pushed out of a dilemma you're about to be pushed out of a circumstance a situation believe god in this season if you never be to strongly suggest that this be the season of your believing thank you titus uh Terrence, i gotta use two devices because one i'm using i can't see it in name pastor nolan thank you so much christy thank you so much thank you so much uh, uh again renee davenport thank you guys so much now Share this, share this. I wanna I wanna share something today. I'm gonna bring a revelation today. I want to unlock some lives. Uh here's here's what I need you to know. There's some of you that are listening to me right now. You come here because God has chosen you to be next. 
uh, uh, you've been in an incubator incubator for quite some time. Your time is now. You are about to be released. God is desiring you to understand who you are so he can release you. Thank you, Minister Joel Pomfrey, uh, Katrina Robinson. God is getting ready to release you. It's going to be very significant that you can grasp what God is saying and what is what God is doing in you it's going to be so powerful now I need to speak on something I got to give an instruction and then we're going to go into the I choose to believe I'm gonna give you an instruction and and it's going to be a, a, a confusing this season could be a very confusing season because of what you are wearing mm -hmm. what you are wearing is so unusual uh, it's a, uh, a a wardrobe of a different dispensation. Let's say it like this. What you are wearing right now is not in style. Hmm. What you are wearing right now is not in style. Under normal circumstances, you will get ridiculed. Thank you, uh, uh, Anne, for being in the house. It's not in style. What do I mean by that? You are wearing something right now that is not in style yet. God has future uh, given you a future suit and it's kind of difficult because you're required to get acclimated to your future suit right now please hear me I'm prophesying to somebody you it's it's confusing in your entire life because right now currently you are living in a situation but God has uh, clothed you with a future suit I hope you understand what I'm saying in other words you are out of style in your wear right now not because you have been dated in it okay. but you have been privy to put on something that is not in style yet now when I say in style it means that most have not grasped what God is doing but you're already wearing it okay. It is so. It is so. Uh, 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 such a divine intervention. What is actually happening? Hey, Pastor Deidre, Pastor Angela. Uh, hey, Mom. What is so interesting about this? You're gonna have to even in your own mind get acclimated to what you are already wearing. Mm. That's what the difficulties is. Is is because you're living in dual dimensions. God is trying to bring you out of one thing and push you into another thing. And it's, it, and it's very difficult because you are living from what you see and not from what you sense. That's what the difficulty in face it, faith is. I'm living from what I see and not from what I sense. And most of the time, what I see can override what I sense because what I see is such a reality to me when what I sense is futuristic. Are you, are you with me? And this is very difficult when you are wearing something of the future. When you are still living in the right come on now. now, come on. It's very difficult for you to get to. It's very difficult for people to get you. They're calling you an outcast because they don't understand you are a preview of a coming attraction. You already got to wear this because when God shifts you into it, you got to be acclimated to what He's He's shifting you into. Are you listening to me? So now, so now, here's what is important in this process. Here's what is important. Please share me. Start your watch parties right now. Get some people in this house because this is something that was downloaded in my spirit by the spirit of God just before I came on. I was so elated that God would allow this to be said because I'm speaking to people that are, are, are the people that are going to engage the next. God is going to give you invention or ideas that have not even been seen. Eyes haven't seen, neither ears have heard what God has downloaded into you. And it's going to be confusing to them and most definitely you because you have been given something to live in next, but you're still right here in your right now. And you are living from what you see physically when God is trying to give you something to sense in your spirit that causes your that that's going to require your faith to come alive. It's going to require your faith to come alive. It's going to require your faith to come alive. There's no going back. There's no going back. You can only move forward. I don't care what they say and what they don't think and how they don't think that this is, is the proper Please hear me. Please hear me. Now, now here is something I want to I want to I want to share I want to share a definition understanding when it comes to spiritual warfare i know we had definition and understanding and ideas but let me share something thank you ebony thank you uh uh, uh tracy bell uh, uh being the house sheila thank you so much now here's a here's a definition of spiritual warfare most time we think spiritual warfare comes when we physically or get in the presence of an enemy please my brothers and sisters please a war strategist is not one that figures out when they engage <laughs> 
the strategy of war has already been deliberated in the rooms before we get to the actual engaging of it. Here's your spiritual warfare order. God is not waiting till you engage a situation. He's trying to download strategy into you right now so that when you get to the battlefield, you can proceed further. Too many times we have given the, been given the opportunity, but when we get to the battlefield, we have been so untrained that we spend all our time fighting there in the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be fighting in the opportunity. You are supposed to be progressing in the opportunity. So now is the season that you get your war strategy downloaded into you. And so it's going to require a complete focus from the Lord because what he's downloading, the enemy is trying to run interference. So you cannot properly hear what he's trying to download in your spirit mm -hmm. right now. There's something you sense that is different from where you're living. It's going to take faith for you to gravitate to what you don't know. Because you're still in your right now when God is speaking about what's to come. Okay. You're still living in your right now when God continues to speak about what's to come. I would strongly suggest that you focus on what to come even though you're still living in your right now. It's a, a work of faith. Here's, a, here, here's the strategy. Please hear me. The enemy in this season to to clog up, he cannot destroy, so he distracts, to clog up. Uh, I was reminded, that's why I told you, I said, your God is something else, because he was downloading strategy in me to release to the people that will be hearing today that are next, even though they're having to live right now. What you're wearing is out of style. In other words, you're wearing something from the future that's out of style to everybody that watch you right now. Please hear this, please hear this. And so he says to me, he says, the spiritual warfare of the enemy is so subliminal, it's coming from places that you trust. That's why I say it's very important who you pick as a mentor because we have been taught by default to pick somebody that we just see and admire. But if your life is a supernatural life, your mentor has got to be people that have experienced the supernatural. Right. That's why Elisha chose Elijah. And when uh, when the widow woman in, in 2 Kings 4 came to him and said, my baby's dead, he got up and put his mouth on his mouth, eye on his eye, everything was matching. Why? Because his mentor could get a supernatural intervention and I need to be mimicking yeah. Who yes, is going yes, to be living yes. where I'm supposed to live? Everybody's not living there, and so God has to shift up some things. I got to get to my text, but somebody that need to hear this. So here it is. Here's the strategy, and I need to I need to let you know this because you're going to be interrupted by people that you trust that God has already caused you to be somewhere that they can't think. He's going to allow you to think some thoughts that they can't think. Listen to me. He's going to allow you to think some thoughts that they can't think. Because many prophets and righteous men desire to know what you know, but I didn't give it to know. That's Matthew 13, 17. Please hear me. Many prophets and righteous men desire to know. I, it's no kick against them. It's just that I chose you for such a time as this. And you're going to have to give it over, get over it. Because the enemy is going to use tools to distract you in places that you thought should have been engaging you to go. But it's going to be distract. And so here it is. Mark the 11th chapter, when I was walking downstairs, this is what the Lord dropped in my spirit. He says, tell them that one of the strategic and subliminal uh, tools of the enemy to stop you from walking into higher level is coming with a notable voice to question your, your, your authority. Because they're not understanding who you are in God. Now, Matthew, uh, uh, Mark, the 11th chapter, I believe it is. Mark, the 11th chapter. Jesus is in the synagogue. Hey, Jonathan, son. Jesus in the synagogue. Here it is. He's, he's teaching, but he's worked miracles. Here it is. Here it is. The text said, here's what the text says. In came the high priest, the scribe, and the elders. Listen to this. Listen to this. I got to drop this. In came the high priest, mm -hmm. the scribe, and the elders. Please hear me. In come the high priest, the scribes, and the elders. Here's the question that they asked Jesus. Please. Here's the spiritual warfare in an unusual, unlikely place. Here it is. By what authority do you do these things? They've seen him work a miracle. They've seen him do some things that was uncommon. By what authority do you do these things? Listen to the question before you start fighting. Listen to the question before you can start fighting. Jesus never fought outside his weight, weight class. Check this out. Here go the high priest, the scribe, and the elders. By what authority do you do these things? Interesting, interesting question. Before you start fighting, listen to the question because we are caught to fight when God says, I'm not, I, I didn't send you to fight. You are an overcomer. I sent you to understand what I put on you. Live there. Live what I put on you. Don't fight. This is a season that you won't get into petty scuffles. 
you will not indulge in petty scuffles in this season. The diligence is going to be into making your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, nobody can stop you. Please hear this. Now, Mark 11, here's the spiritual warfare, subliminal spiritual warfare that you're going to encounter because you are out of style. You're wearing something out of style. Listen to this. You are living right now when God has dressed you for your future, so you are out of style. You are trying to get acclimated to what's to come when you're still living in the right now. That's okay. God is training you through this process to live because once he drops you in the life, he don't want you to mess that up. He wants you to start rolling and maximize what he's giving. Somebody need to hear this. So the spiritual warfare that is about to come is going to come into some, from some places that's going to confuse you because you're going to think they should automatically know who you are. But you don't get that I'm so new as Jesus was. How can they discern who I am? I'm coming to do something totally different than what's been done. I got an idea that has not been even released yet. I got some things that are turning in me that eyes haven't seen, neither ears have heard. So why should I be surprised if people cannot process who I am? And so here it is, Mark 11 again. It says, in come the chief priest, unusual, unlikely. Why are the chief priests going to fight me? Here come the scribe, the understanders of the law. They're supposed to do the law. And here comes the elders. They are running the church. And now they're coming in. Here's the question. Here's the question. Thank you, Pastor Joe Tallamore. Thank you, Felicia Pryor. Both of them are cousins. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. By what authority do you do these things? Now, listen. Don't fight because you're going to have to answer the question. You're going to have to understand the question and then answer the question. Understand what the question is? We thought that we got to fight for what God is about to give us. No, this is not your fight season. This is your season to understand and to walk therein. Listen, listen to it. By what authority do you do these things? Here's the question. Let's break it down because I need you to see this. By what authority do you do these things? In other words, they just told Jesus, you just done something. You just done something. You just had the authority to do something. You just made something happen, and we were not a part of it. In other words, who is your covering that will allow you to have the authority to do what you've done? Ooh, that's my, who are, who are uh, 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 your overseers that will allow you, who sanctioned you to do this? Now, here it is, the question again. The question comes from the chief priest, it comes from the scribe, and it comes from the elders. By what authority? Right. Have you done what I seen you do? In other words, I seen you do it, but now I'm confused because you didn't include me in the doing. Oh my God, you didn't you didn't ask me if it was right for you to do. You didn't ask me if it was the right time for you to do it. This is the season you're walking in. The authority that you're about to walk in is going to be offensive to many. I need you to hear this. The authority that you are walking in is going to be offensive. It's going to be the first sign when they see that you are different than what they've always known. You are the picture of what God is doing. You are a preview of what is to come when you're working and living around people that are accustomed to what is. God is shifting you into a supernatural season and it's going to be very difficult for most to even comprehend where you are. Now, for those of you that might perhaps think that I am not a son of a, 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 a brotherhood or people come together, that is not the truth. But I'm also one that speaks the word of God and speak it in truth. There is something God is ready to shift something and he's ready to shift the right people in place that are sanctioned for the shift. You are a part of that move of God and he cannot let you get lost in the mix. Here's another very subliminal act of the enemy coming from unusual places. There are going to be questions asked you by what was used what used to be the authoritative figure, the sources. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna release something out of your spirit that you know God told you to release. And then the question is going to be asked by the people that are supposed to be the leaders in what you believe. The question, Jesus always encounters strange questions from the chief priest. Jesus always in 
encounter strange question from the Pharisees. This was to throw off what he had just said. Check it out. This was to throw off. Uh, uh, I, I hear what you said and I hear what God is doing, but let me ask you something about the law. Hmm. That's a subliminal, that's a, a subliminal attack of the enemy that we have not recognized. It's called spiritual warfare. Anytime you are, are, are sent to do something brand new, watch the questions that come from the hierarchy. Mm. When you are sent to release something brand new, watch the questions that you get from the hierarchy. These are all questions. Uh, here's, here's how it most of the time phrased. Uh, uh, son, 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 son. To make you comfortable with giving up on what God created you to be. Please hear me. I don't care. Please hear what I'm saying. They are to make you comfortable in questioning what God has dropped in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So one of the subliminal uh, uh, spiritual warfare tactics of the enemy is when God releases something new because you say, I am apostolic. I am the new. When God releases it, why are we so surprised if I say that I am the future and God releases something in the future? Why do I have to question uh, uh, myself when somebody else questioned me? Mm -hmm. If I'm brand new or am I, if, if I am being used. Why do I have to say, okay, well, well, uh, let me uh, make sure uh, uh, God is speaking to me. That's one of the tricks of the enemy. It's a, it's a very subliminal attack of spiritual warfare. Warfare number one: the question is asked by what authority do did you do this? The question is very vital and very. Uh, I got to understand. They are not saying that you can't do what you uh, just done because they are seeing. They're seeing you actually operate. And so now we got the question, how would you or why would you operate when you didn't let us know that you were in operation? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so powerful. This is so powerful. Now, check this out. Number two is strange questions, questions being asked. Uh, Jesus had to encounter a question. If you go to the 12th chapter, uh, uh, here comes the Pharisees, the leadership. Watch the question. Um, uh, should you uh, give honor to Caesar? Now, now, I, listen, listen, I am preaching, I am teaching people kingdom, and the question that the leaders are going to ask me, who should I give honor to? That's another subliminal attack of the enemy to take the people mind and pull it into something else. He says, bring a coin, let me show you what the coin is. It says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar. I don't have time for these questions because there's people hungry. Number four, here's number four, check it out. Number four is, uh, he cast out a devil. The authority, the chief priest, here it is, scribe, say, say, you cast it, you, really? How, how, how can you do that? Now, the question is not that you don't have, if you have the authority to cast out, mm -hmm. why did you cast it out and not let us know that you were? Mm -hmm. How did you, how would you go around us and then let us know? We, we can't take credit for this. We can't take credit for this. Listen, listen, I had to drop this in your spirit because I know that there are people that are listening to me. You are in a holding cell of your own choice. You are in a holding cell of your own choice. You are in a holding cell of your own choice because you cannot get over what you have been taught your entire life. This is the challenge of everyone that's called next. You're going to have to be able to get over. You're going to have to be able. Here's when the miracles begin. Is when I decide that I'm going to obey God. Paul says it in Galatians. He says, I've been preaching 17 years and I only went up one time to declare what I've been doing 17 years now. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Oh That's rule number. I had to open that up because I'm, I know that I'm speaking to people right now. You are at the door of destiny. The door of destiny is cracking. The door of destiny is open and God is ready for you to move on. The name of this video, I had to drop that. I choose to believe. Somebody write that in and let me know that you're here with me today. I choose to believe. If you have not shared this with somebody, please, if you have shared it with a couple of people, Go share this with uh, at least 20 more. I'm going to open up something. I know that God is going to bless your spirit with this. You are at the door of something major. You you feel it. You are, you are, it's rumbling inside your spirit and you want it. But the only thing that's holding you back is the proper instruction. Please share this. Please share it. I choose to believe. 
I choose to believe. I'm going to believe God even in this climate. It does not look like it. It does. It seems like uh, uh, God has went on vacation in this season, but he has not. He has not. If you understand the route of God or the methods of God, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a, a vivid picture of how God always let the circumstances uh, 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 get to a place where it seems impossible. Why does God do that? It's it's his reasoning. It's his reasoning. He's got to let it get far beyond your ability to change it. He's got to let it get far outside of your power base. He's got to let it get to the place where you are at the point of no return. That's God's method. Because then is the only time, at that point is the only time that you will see a divine intervention. I know life has been extreme. I know you've been in some deficits. I know things are one thing after the other has been coming against you. That is the very place that you are going to see a divine intervention if you choose to believe. According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. Heaven is not bankrupt. Heaven is not in a deficit either. Please hear this. Please hear this. I choose to believe. Now, I, I, when, when I was was uh, thinking about this, this is what the Lord dropped into my spirit. And I want to share this with you. In scripture, God will always do his best work when there was people that were physically blind. This is interesting. Physically blind. When he says, according to your faith, or do you believe that I can do this? He's talking to a couple of blind men that have asked him for sight. This is interesting. This is interesting. His, he, he says, do you believe that I can do this? Now, I don't think it's by chance that the Bible will show Jesus' greatest miracles around people that are blind because of this simple fact. For you to really get faith or allow your faith to come alive or really for you to believe on the level that you need to believe, you're going to have to become a, 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 a blind in your physical. Yes. Yeah. So that your spirit man yeah. can begin to see. I don't think it's by chance that he's working with people that are physically blind. It's a picture that when we see our greatest intervention from God is, is the day that we stop seeing with our physical eyes. The day that we stop processing through our physical eyes. Remember, our physical eye is to see through. Our revelation is what we see with. Mm. Our physical eye is what we see through. Our revelation is what we see with. When my mind has changed or been transformed, I can see through my eyes, but my spirit have the power to say it is well, even though I'm in a current condition that don't look good. When I can see through my spirit or my revelation, I can see a thing with my physical eye and still declare it is is well. Why? Because there's something on the inside of me that says that my physical eye can't even understand. And this is why in scripture it is always uh, 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 interesting that when Jesus come to blind people, the first question is, do you believe? Mm -hmm. And the interaction starts there because he knows that they are not seeing anything physical that brings hope. They're going to have to go inside. It's the same suggestion that he's saying to us. If you're going to have your faith come alive, you're going to have to shut your physical eyes. Yeah. If your faith is going to come alive, you're going to have to shut your physical eyes. Because right now, it does not look like what God said. It does not look. Your situation is in defiance of your revelation. So on the flip side, your revelation is in a fight with your situation. Mm. I would strongly suggest that you believe God even if it does not look like it. I strongly suggest you believe God. So here it is. He comes to the two blind men that are begging for sight. He says, first thing is, do you believe in the midst of your issue? Can you gather enough faith in your current issue? Uh, uh, in other, other words, can you can you fake this in when you can't see no way? <laughs> can you fake this next miracle in when you see no evidence? Can you fake in what you don't see? Can you look through in your spirit, look through the current chaos that's surrounding you? Can you get by this? He says, if you can get by that, then the miracle is yours. According to your faith. 
And then he tells them to go your way because your faith will always make things whole. If you can, can declare that I believe God in spite of what I see with my physical eye, he says the rest of it is easy. Mm. Because there's no problem in the power. <laughs> there's a pro problem in the perceiving. Mm. There's no problem with the power. The problem is in the perceiving. Can you see what I'm showing you in your spirit? Despite what you see with your physical eye. This is the challenge. I want to share something with you because I think this is so significant. I want to share a, a, a story about a blind man because this is so significant. I want to, in uh, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, I want to share this. I want to open this up. Oh, this is beautiful to me. I love this word. I love it. While everybody is saying it's it's broken, it's, it's, it's flawed, I'm telling you, it's real. Come on. It's 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 real. Yeah. It's real. I'm telling you it's real. If it's broken and it's flawed to you, there's an error in your understanding. Mm. Ooh, this there's an error. I, I I boldly say that if you think that this is flawed and there's error, there's so many people say, I can't read that because that's the white man's book and it made me a slave. Well, I have read it and I don't see anywhere where it tells me that I am a slave Come to on. anybody. Mm. It, perhaps you listened to somebody tell you that and you didn't actually read it yourself. It says, I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head Come on. and not the tail. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. It says, this is what it says to me. I should be lending and not borrowing. So if somebody done told you that this is to make you a slave, then you probably haven't read it yourself. And the accusations that you have against those that believe, you're probably a victim of it yourself. <laughs> Just, just, just process that just a little bit. I got to get into this thing because here it is, Mark chapter ten. Jesus is actually dealing with a blind man. Right. I got to, I got to read this because in Mark chapter ten, he's dealing with a young man uh, uh, by the uh, by the name of uh, uh, Bartimaeus. Uh, uh, he 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 was blind. Let me find out where 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 is this? This is this is Mark ten. Now I got something dropped in my spirit, and I got to get to it because it just dropped in my spirit. I got to find out where it is. But this is a very powerful passage. This is Mark chapter ten, verse number forty six. I'm gonna start there. Please hear me. If you have not shared with this, go 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 go. Please go share this. Thank you, Camille, for being out. Go share. Say, Pastor Jesus, better unpack something, and I think it's gonna help. It's gonna help. It's gonna open up something. Oh, so here it is. Every time. Uh, 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 Jesus says, according to your faith, it, 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 most times dealing with somebody blind that's now got some insight. Okay. Because he knows that when I get ready to bust the move, it's going to start with revelation, illumination. That's that's the places that it starts, and information. That means that the light is coming on. All right. That means that the places that I was blind in, he's about to open my eyes up to. So that's where the miracle started, when he started dropping revelation, information. That means that a miracle is at your door. That's why he's turning the light on. He's taking the blinders off because he want to see. If you can challenge yourself to see with your spiritual man, and, and, and it defies what you see with your physical man. You are on the road. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you are on the road to a mirror. Here it is. I'm going to start reading that because I need to unpack this. I hope I can get man. I, I get, man, this, this, is, this is such a powerful passage once you see it the way the Spirit is trying to say. Thank you, Lakeith Stout. Blessings to you and your family. Healing. Just, uh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, Mark 10, verse number 46. And they came to Jericho. And they came to Jericho. Please hear this text. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, look, listen to this, and a great number of people, uh, 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 blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside uh, uh, begging. Here's a, here's a blind man. That uh, Here comes Jesus out, out of Jericho. And there's a blind man that is begging. Well, check out what the text says. The 47th verse, it was difficult for me to get past this verse because there was so much information in there. I need to share this with you because just as Bonamales is sitting on the roadside expecting something, you are about to expect something and My you're God. about to get your intervention. Yes. Check it out. Thank you, Lord. Check it out. And when he heard, here it is, here's Bonamales sitting on the roadside, Jesus is coming out. No, no what it says. This is verse 47. This is Mark 10, 47. Look at what the text said. It says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on 
me. Now listen to what the text said. I got to unpack this. It says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth who did he hear from? Mm -hmm. He's sitting on the roadside. He can't see. So the, the Bible says that here comes Jesus out of Jericho. Check it out. Him in a crowd. And he heard the crowd say something. This is Jesus of Nazareth. Now when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, this boy began to cry out. Here's what is so significant. And I got to get you to see this. This is the challenge of Bartimaeus, and then it's the challenge of me. We are living in a climate and in a season. I got to show you this because this is important. That Jesus and his name has been so taken for granted that we don't even know the power that he possessed in his name. Here's, 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 here's what Bartimaeus is challenged with, and here's what we're challenged in this climate. Uh, uh, what we have believed, we've listened to so many people give us a definition of till it has diminished it to just a Sunday morning experience where I go punch my Jesus card and that's about it. It's not an expectancy of his power that he possessed. It's just him coming through. It's just, it's just, it's just Jesus. Okay, it's Jesus amongst many other belief system. Mm. I don't even refer to him as anything special because I've heard that he's just one of them. Now, tech, look at what the text says. Look at it. The Bible says this. Listen to what it says. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry. Listen, he heard from the crowd that this is just Jesus from Nazareth. Please hear me. But then the text said, but he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David. That is a significant difference when you really understand. This is why miracles start when revelation is entered into your space. Okay. This is why Jesus always did his greatest miracles around blind. Why? Because illumination, revelation, and information is always the beginning. When God says in the beginning, let there be light, he was not talking about the sun because it was the fourth day. When he's saying, let there be revelation, when I speak revelation, that means that it's the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. God will always start anything with a revelation. And so here it is, Bartimaeus challenge was hear people saying that this is Jesus of Nazareth but with his not his eyes but him knowing the scripture and what the word says about him he calls him Jesus mm -hmm. thou son of David here's the significant because if he had to listen to what the crowd said mm -hmm. If he had listened to what the crowd said, he would have processed him as just Jesus from Nazareth. When you process him from just as Jesus from Nazareth, here's what you get. The question is, is there any good thing that can come out of Nazareth? Ooh, this is powerful. Is there anything? That's our question now because people have greatly diminished him. Now we're questioning, is he the one or should we be looking for another. So so here's, 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 here's what the blind man said. Bartimaeus says, no, you're just calling him Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going to call him Jesus, thou son of David, because I have heard a word. A revelation is riding on the inside of my heart that make him bigger than just Jesus of Nazareth because you'll question his power because you think there's no good thing that can come out of that. Here it is. So this, this, this is the challenge. Here it is. Here's the challenge. When Bartimaeus says, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, it meant that he actually believed the scripture. Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to be challenged with in this season. You're going to have to believe what scripture says when everybody else is giving you a different definition. Please hear me. The crowd that is circling Jesus say he's from Nazareth. The scripture says that he is Jesus, thou son of David. Why are you saying this? Because 2 Samuel chapter 7, he prophesies, God himself prophesies to David through the prophet Nathan. He says, you're trying to build me a house, but you can't build me a house. He says, I'm going to build you a house, and I'm going to give you a son that is going to sit on your throne. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, uh, Bartimaeus is saying to, to him. He said, I believe what the scripture has said. Mm -hmm. The scripture said you are not just one coming out of Nazareth because they might question if any good thing can come out of Nazareth. I'm saying that you are the son of God. You are actually the Messiah.
You are exactly what the prophet's been prophesying, that my deliverance is going to come. And I am blind with my physical eye, but my spirit says I got to cry because the deliverer is in my presence. This is what God is saying to you. You're going to look through your physical and it's going to look like nothing is happening. But in your spirit, you're going to sense oh, that the that. one that delivers yes. right now <laughs> is in my it's in my presence. And so your spirit is going to leave. You're going to sense something that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. This is the segue into your supernatural is that you recognize again in this climate that Jesus is the Messiah. And if I call upon his name, there will be an intervention. So he says, Jesus, thou son of David, I understand the scripture. I know they've been trying to tear the scripture down and say the scripture is not true. But here's blind Bonamaya said, I know I'm not going to call him Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going to call him Jesus, thou son of David, which signifies he is the Messiah. And if I believe that he is the Messiah, then I believe that, uh, uh, here it is, Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6 is true. He's walking the whole entirety because Jesus comes in the volume of the book. And so he says, I got to believe from the beginning because I'm looking for a supernatural intervention. I'm not going to take him for granted because everybody else is just calling them something. I'm going to believe, even though I'm in a dysfunctional situation right now, I know that my dysfunction is about to leave me because I know that the presence of the one that heals is in my presence. Mm. Listen to it. So he says, I know that you're the son of David because I believe the scripture. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. Please hear this. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulder. He's going to change everything for me because I believe in his name. Check out what the text says. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Come Seven on, verses. Here's, here's what uh, uh, Barnabas really put his hope on. Verse number 7. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David mm. and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment yes. and with justice from whence, uh, uh, from henceforth, ever, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Listen to what Barnabas has just said. I'm trusting in the one that has been sent here. I sense that I got a problem and I know that it's a it's a it's a horrific problem and it, everybody is telling me that there's no hope but I sense that the healer is in my presence and I have to have the faith I have to choose to believe when everybody else is saying it is hopeless for me check it out he says up on it listen to what text said uh, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. In other words, I got a problem, but since Jesus is here, he's got a right to rewrite the order on my life. He's got the re he's oh, he's got the power to change my situation with one declaration. Mm. So I'm crying out not to Jesus of Nazareth. I'm calling out to the Messiah. It's the it, it, it's a, according to your understanding. You might look down on him, but I'm looking up to yes, him because yes. I sense that this is the one that was prophesied. Your next order is going to be important that you understand what has already been ordered over your life by God Himself. And so here it is. Here it is. Here's his Bartimaeus saying, "I'm blind." Y'all telling me this is Jesus of Nazareth, but. I know the scripture, the scripture says that this is the Messiah that shall sit on the throne of David. I can't see him with my physical eyes, but my spirit say, holler now, holler, holler now. Don't let these people stop you from hollering Come now on. because he's in the presence. Because I know I'm going to get healed because the scripture says, here's what the scripture says. He, he says, I know what the scripture says. The scripture says in Isaiah 53, 5, here it is, here it is. He says, I know what the scripture says. I can't see right now, but I know what the scripture says. I know what Revelation says. Revelation says Isaiah 53 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's who he's crying out to. And with his stripes, I'm going to be healed from this blindness. I, I've already seen him in the spirit. So when I can process him in my spirit, I know in my physical, I'm going to have an intervention. Listen to me. When you can process this thing, this is why miracles always happen to people that were blind because they were limited in their physical sight. So that meant that their spiritual insight had to come alive. And here's Bonamaya saying, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm physically 
uh, uh, dysfunctional, mm -hmm. but since I'm physically dysfunctional, it has caused me to sense something in my insight that my physical sight can't even uh, can't even comprehend. Notice what the text said. Next text said. Next said. Verse six. All we like sheep. Ooh, listen, listen to what Bonhamé is saying. Listen to him. He says, I'm dysfunctional. I'm dysfunctional, but I got a revelation. I got a revelation because God's word always says, those of you that have been operating in dysfunction and you operated there because you didn't know no better, that's okay. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm passing by again. Don't you miss me this time. Don't you look at me like they told you to look at me. Don't you discredit me because they are discredited me. Don't you take me for granted because they taking me for granted. Now remember, Jesus' greatest fight was chief priests, scribes, and the elders. They couldn't understand who he was. He said, don't you let don't you let sometimes you're gonna have to close your eyes to what you see physically so i can speak something to you in your spirit check check out the tip bonomeos is saying i'm dysfunctional they told me to shut up but i sent something in my spirit that i can't shut up even though i'm dysfunctional notice what he said notice what the text said here what isaiah said it said all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Listen at the boldness of Barnabas. He says, I'm dysfunctional. If I listen to the crowd, they say, this is your plight in life. Live with it. This is the bed that you have made. Go ahead on and sleep in it. He says, no, I would accept that if I thought this was Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. But since I know that this is the Messiah and I know what is written about him, mm -hmm. even though I'm dysfunctional in a season, yeah. I know he can't leave Come me on. right here. Come on. I know he mm. won't leave me. So I choose to believe that if I cry out, he's going to hear every word that I say. Listen to me. How can we expect a supernatural intervention and we decide to leave Jesus out. How can we expect that God is going to step on my behalf on the level that I need to see him and I'm leaving Jesus out? I choose to believe. I choose to believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Check out the text. Check out the text. Check out the text. The text said, and many charged him. Notice what the text said. They said they charged him that he should hold his peace. <laughs> Listen, many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Why? Because you're telling me to shut up because I'm dysfunctional, because you throw me to the side. But I hear the Messiah coming. I, I've Ooh. heard your words. I, I could have listened to what you said. I could have listened to you tell me that I'm in this because of what I've done wrong. Ooh. There are many people right now, you have accepted your dilemma because somebody told you that this is your plight. This is where you got to live. And they almost got you. Mm. But then Jesus came Come walking on. by. Thank you, Lord. You, you smelt the aroma of grace. You smelt the aroma, the aroma of grace cover you. And now you're saying, I cannot sit by and let an intervention on this level, even though I'm dysfunctional, come unto me. All ye that labor in our heavy land. He says, I am the one. This is why. This is why he's coming back again. Because here it is. Bartimaeus know the scripture. Check it out. In Psalms chapter 34, verse number 6. Check it out. Check it out. This applied to him. This is why I got to know what the scripture says. Because if I don't, I'm going to listen to what they said. And my dysfunction is going to cause me to be left out because they don't have no use for me because I'm no good to them. But when the master comes by, he says, I specialize in fixing all of your dysfunction. If you will cry out in the midst of your dysfunction, I hear your cry. Because whenever there's a fake cry, he is obligated to stop and listen. Whenever there's a, even with his disciples, the one that's supposed to know him most, when the woman had the issue of blood, who touched him by the faith, he said, who touched me? Who touched me? And they say the better question is, who didn't touch you? Because you are surrounded by needy people. He says, no, no, no. Listen to me. I know when there's a fake touch. I know when somebody is crying out of dysfunction, but they got some faith. Because they know I got the power to deliver. That's what God is saying. He got the power to deliver. Cry out of your dysfunction because he's about to intervene in your situation. Here it is. Uh, Psalms 34, verse number 6. It says, this poor man cried. <laughs> this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. Listen, listen, listen. It ain't uh, predicated on what you got, who you came from, which is dysfunction. I don't care. This poor man cried. 
How many poor people right now we need to cry out to the one that is able to save? He's he's walking by right now. I'm talking to people that you got a title and it's a good one, but you're still poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. You still need a divine intervention. Don't let the devil uh, fool you into saying your, your title is enough. No, not in this season. We're going to have to move to the one. Check it out. It says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. 18 verse. This is Psalm 34, verse number 18. The Lord is nigh unto thee that are brokenhearted and save it such as to be con uh, of a contrite spirit. Here's, here's what Barnabas had to believe. And here's what you're going to have to believe. You're going to have to stop listening to what people are saying and trust what you are feeling on the inside. Because Barnabas could have been like the other blind man in John chapter 9. Now watch this. The disciples, and this is what we always ask as church folk. Mm -hmm. The disciples ask Jesus when they come into John 9 and they see a blind man that was born from his birth. The first question is, who did sin? His mother, father, or him. And Jesus says, y'all miss it every time. Y'all miss it every time. Y'all miss it every time. You don't know that this sickness is to the glory of God. Actually, he's been looked at. Oh, actually, he's been noticed by the healer. All right. This is to bring glory. Whenever God says this is to bring glory, he's saying that your infirmity has been noticed by the one that can heal. You are ready to see a divine intervention. If you will cry out in the season, it's going to be very important that you don't process him as Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Bartimaeus could have took the could have took the the advice of the crowd and said that he said they he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He could have took the crowd advice and said, oh, well, don't worry about it because no good thing okay. come out of, out of, uh, oh, that, okay, 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 that's a very powerful picture right there, uh, uh, in, in, in John uh, chapter number one, verse number 46, uh, 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 Philip has come to Nathania mm -hmm. and he says, Nathania, I think that we have found the prophet that the Moses has spoke about, he, he, he is the Messiah, he is the Messiah, and, 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 and here it is, Nathania doubted. And said, how, how would you know? Nathaniel is the one that asked the question, where is he from? He said, he's the carpenter's son. He's from Nazareth. And Nathaniel said, can any good thing come mm -hmm. out of Nazareth? And then uh, Jesus coming down to him, and he says, Nathaniel? <laughs> and Nathaniel said, oh my God, this is the Messiah because he called my name. Mm -hmm. He says to him, he said, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, please listen to me, brother. He says, you think because I called your name that you're going to see things? He says, if you can really to get the essence of who I am. Mm -hmm. He says, in your future, heaven and earth is about to open up. If you don't miss and call me just Jesus from Nazareth, when you understand that I am the Messiah, that's going to open up your entire life. That's what God is saying. You can either uh, uh, choose to believe that he's just Jesus of Nazareth, or you can be like Bonamaeus and say, no, that's what you're saying. But my spirit says that this is the Messiah. This is the one sin. And, and many charged him, look at it, and many charged him that he should hold his feet, but he cried more a great deal. Mm. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, the Messiah, please, I'm in a dysfunctional situation. They're telling me to be quiet. They say by now you should be able to accept what you got. I'm saying no. If the presence of the Lord is in my presence, I can no longer accept my dysfunction. I can no longer live life as well. The 49th verse says, and Jesus stood still. Why? Because anytime there's a cry from faith, he is obligated because he is the word. Anytime a cry come out of faith, I don't care how dysfunctional you are, cry out of your faith when you feel the presence of God. Don't listen to the crowd say, uh, oh, he's just, he's just, he's not doing that anymore. He's not interested in doing it for you. He's not interested right now. He's on a mission. He says, when you cry out of faith, I've got to stop and hear what you were saying. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Because Hebrews 11 and 6 says this. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to him must first believe that he is and as a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Here it is. Bartimaeus dysfunctional. He says, I got dysfunction, but I know the word. The word says, if I cry, hmm. he's going to reward. He cried. The text said, Jesus stopped and said, I've got to hear this cry. Now watch this, watch this. And, and, and he stood still and commanded him 
to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, check this out. Check out how this turned. This is why you can't listen to people. The same people that tell you to shut up. Okay. When it's time for you to get called or they see you connected to, to the one that can say, check it out. Check it out. Here it is. Their whole thing changed. And they called the blind man saying unto him, be a good comfort. Ooh, be a good comfort. Rise, he call it thee. This is why you can't listen to the crowd. Because they can process you from your dysfunction and really throw you away. But now you are connected to be careful what the enemy does when he finds out that you got a divine mm -hmm. intervention. Now they reconnect. They reconnect. Let, listen to the it says, he call it for you. Check out what the text says. This is very vital because I choose to believe. Check out what the text says. And he, this is the 50th verse. This is Mark 10, verse number 50. Check it out. Notice what it said. It said, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Do, do, do you hear that? He casting away his garment. Now, here's what you must understand about these times. When you are a beggar, it's just like being on public uh, government assistance. Mm -hmm. You got to go down there and you got to fill out the papers before you receive your EBT card. You got to go down there and fill out the necessary and do the necessary work to be declared eligible for the assistance. The same thing happened in the day of Bartimaeus. For him to be a professional beggar, a qualified beggar, he's got to go before the system to be qualified so that people won't make him leave. Please stay with me. Mm -hmm. So he had to qualify himself in his dysfunction. He had to qualify to be one that people felt sorry for. Mm -hmm. He had to qualify. And here's what the text, here's what you got to understand. And to be that, they put a certain garment on you so that people would know that you are qualified to beg. Mm. People would identify that you are somebody that's needy. People would identify that you are somebody dysfunctional by the clothes that you wear. And so the text says, when Jesus said, this is Jesus the Messiah, not Jesus of Nazareth. When Jesus the Messiah, the healer of your dysfunction, told him to stand forward, the first thing that Barnabas did is say, I've got to take off these beggars' clothes. Because my, my whole paradigm is about to shift. Ah. I can't be wearing what I used come to on, wear. Come on. I can't be identified no longer as someone that is Make dysfunctional. Mm. I can't be identified as a beggar no longer because I'm connected now to unlimited resources. You got to hear this. You got to make a choice that I know what you put on me. I know what you told me I was. I know what you told me I should be wearing. But this season, I'm connecting to the come Messiah. On, come and on. so I'm about to pull yes, off yes. all of the weights and the mm. sins that has so easily <laughs> beset me because I'm about to walk into something brand new in the season. So he, pulled up, he stood up. He says, I can't even connect to Jesus with this that I got on. Because I will still be declaring that I'm a beggar. Come on. And I can't declare that I'm a beggar when I'm standing in the presence of the Messiah. I cannot declare that I'm still a needy when I'm standing in the presence of the Messiah. I can't declare that I'm dysfunctional mm. when I'm standing in the presence of the one that healed. The text said, and he cast out the clothes, and he came to Jesus. The 51st verse said, and Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I should do to thee? Now, he just cried out that I need a healing. He says, make it real complain in this season. Give me details on what you want. Don't you come to the Messiah and don't come with details on what you need. What's the intervention that you need right now? Now, it's interesting that if you file bankruptcy, I've seen people file bankruptcy and they and they'll put everything because it's suggested by the, uh, their uh, counsel that when you file bankruptcy, you're going to mess up the credit. So you might as well stick everything in. Here's what I'm suggesting to you that are believers that are dysfunctional. If you're going to come to the Messiah, don't come with one thing. Ooh, make sure on, you throw it on. all in and say, Lord, I need you to make me whole. Yes, My sir. entire yes, life sir. need a shift right now. I need you to shift everything in my life because I'm standing in your presence. I know you're the one to heal, so I need you to fix everything. Mm. I need to put my children in there, my finance yes, in there, my house Thank in there, my Lord. job in there, yes. my husband in everything. there, my church in there. I need to I need you to fix everything while you're fixed. Stay with me now. The 51st in the case said, what should I do for thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Oh, that's all I need is the insight. Because once I pull off these bag of clothes and you give me a revelation, the world is open for me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move again. Uh, I'm ready to jump out my dysfunction. Because you always put this in me. I just couldn't see who I was in you. But now I'm walking and walking with the master. Now I'm a product of my environment. <laughs> I'm going to let this mind be in me that's in you. And you are, ooh, are you hearing me today? Somebody needs to hear it. Check it out, check it out. 52nd verse, and Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made. Because you chose to believe, 
mm. because you didn't listen to the crowd that say point. your situation, I can already tell you, because we have uh, experienced several situations like your situation, you fit into this box. Mm. I don't fit into no your box, box no because box. I know who my uh, uh, savior is. I know his potential. I know exactly. I'm not listening to you define him as Jesus of Nazareth. I'm defining him in my revelation as the Messiah, the one that was prophesied about that would come and heal, deliver, and set free. Take, 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 say, go down and immediately, and immediately, and immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. In other words, he got his healing because he didn't listen to what people said. Mm -hmm. He chose to believe in spite of the current condition and the predicament that he was in. You know, going there, somebody had to lead him there. But leaving there, he left on his own power. Woo! Thank you. There's been people that's been leading you to places and they've been putting you in the position of a beggar. Mm. Somebody had to put Bonamales in the position to beg. Mm. They thought they was doing him a favor by taking him to the place where you can beg yeah. every day. Yeah. But the Bible says when you have an encounter with Jesus, I don't need nobody leading me to the place of bad. I can lead myself to the place of prosperity Come on. because I'm standing by the one that say, oh, this is so powerful. To me. Let's go back to the verse number, the first verse, which is the 46th verse because I need you to see this because some of you have lost hope because they done set you in that position several days and your uh, uh, welfare is based on what they throw in your cup. What you live and how, what you expect is based off somebody coming by and saying, I guess I'll flip a coin in their cup. This ain't the season that you're going to wait for somebody to flip something in your cup. This is the season that you're going to have a divine intervention from the one that knows what he created you to be. Look at the text. Look at the text. Here it is, 46th verse of uh, Mark 10. Listen to it. Listen to it. And then we're done. Listen to it. Listen to it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I got to read 46. 46. What did I say? 46. It said, this is the detail of the text. Here it is. It says, and they came to Jericho, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bonamaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the uh, uh, highway side back. Look at what the text said. And they came to Jericho. Here they are going in, and as they went out, they ran into uh, Barnabas. Here's what's important about the text. going to be done. Look at what the text said. Listen to what the text said. He says, they went in and then they came out. Barnabas encountered Jesus on the way out. Okay. Now, the text doesn't say if he was there when he went in, but it does say he was there when he came out. Here's what I need to prophesy to some of y'all that are listening to me. You might have missed him on the way in, on, yeah. but you're not going to miss him on the way out. Mm. He's going to give you, he's about to swing around again. He says, I came in, you couldn't recognize me because you were listening to what people said but when I come out you're going to recognize who I am and you're going to cry out when I come out and I'm going to connect to you this is a season that you're about to see the wind Ooh. coming around again everything that you missed because you were blind because you were listening to what people said you were listening to and you were living by what they threw in your cup and that was limited not this season you're going to catch him on the way out let's pray Ooh. together let's pray together father I thank you for this word I thank you for the hearers of this word. I thank you for bringing people out, people that were blind. As Bonomeo says, I once was blind, but now I see. I didn't know that this level of intervention was privy and available to me. But now that I see, I see that I don't have to live in this condition any longer. I'm going to cry out to the one that say the Messiah. I will not take him for granted because the crowd is saying he no longer desires. He no longer have the power. He no longer. But I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in this season of my life. And I give your name praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you might have missed him on the way in because you were listening to what they said. But this time on the way out, you're going to cry out and he's going to stop and say, yes, I've been waiting for you to cry unto me. I'm the one that saved. I am the one that heals. I am the one that sets free. I am the one that delivers you. Don't listen to what they say. Don't listen to what they say. They might be having a bad day and they throw off everything that they want on you. I need y'all to hear me. I need y'all to hear me. There's an attack of the enemy that's going to come against you in unusual places. It's going to try to mess with your mind. It's trying to make you lose focus in this season. But you're going to have to see inside and not see with your physical eyes. You're going to have to see from your spirit, man, and not from your physical man. Listen to me. There's some things that the Lord is trying to shift you into 
and the enemy don't want you to go there. He does not want you to enter into this zone because once you enter into this zone, he knows you become self-sufficient then. You're not looking for no handouts because you're connected. You know that now I'm connected and you have a right to connect. Just imagine Bonamayas, mm. the blind man that was led to places to beg, couldn't even leave by himself. My God. How can you uh, defy the persons that you were dependent on to get you there. They might leave you there all night. But that tells you that his faith was in another place. I came here helpless. But I'm not going to leave here helpless. I'm going to have an intervention. I'm going to have this. So if everybody that brought me here leave me. I'm going to walk out of here under my own power. <laughs> Make a choice. Because I made a choice to believe. You, I'm, I'm, I'm daring you. I'm daring you. To believe God. I'm daring you in spite of your dysfunctional situation that you're in. I dare you to trust God. I dare you to tell God that I believe. I dare you to. Remember, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't know how I can express this to you. The warfare of the spiritual warfare of the enemy is so deceptive in this season. Like Jesus, you're going to look for something to come at you that 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 you recognize he's using people that have spoken into your life mm -hmm. to cause you to miss this move he's he's, he's, he's allowing you. people that have spoken please hear me he's allowing people that are, you have a right to remain like you are you have a right to stay there but he's giving you an option because this is a tricky season He's allowing people that you trusted that may have spoken to your last dispensation and he want, they want to transcend into it. And that's the tool that the enemy needs. That's why they asked Jesus, the chief priests, the scribes and the elders asked him, by what authority do you do this? By what authority do you do this? That means that he got the power to do what he's doing. But they were angry because... I didn't sanction you to do it. In other words, I didn't flip nothing in your cup. How dare you think you're going to get something and I didn't put it in your cup, Bonamans. You are dysfunctional. And if I don't put it in your cup, how can you expect to live outside of what I put in your cup? So that means that I have a right to limit your life and keep you at a certain level. And because you trust me, because I brought you here, I brought you here, but I put you in a place of dysfunction. I put you in a place of begging. You always got to look to me. To give you some stuff. And that's the subliminal. That's where we cannot detect. What the enemy is doing in this season. But this season you're going to break out. You're going to break out. I believe it with all I have to believe. Bless you. Bless you for those that you want to give into this word. And I would strongly suggest it. That if you want to sow into this. She's going to put the uh, information up there right now. Uh, Cash app is the N O B. C N O B C N O B C. We are so thankful. We are so thankful that, uh, uh, for God using us in this season. We take no credit for anything. We're just being vessels. We're we are vessels of the Lord. Amen. That's speaking truth. If you will go back and listen to the entirety of this teaching, I think it's really gonna bless you tremendously. I think it'll really bless you. Thank you, Sharon Butler. <laughs> That's our folks, Sharon mm -hmm. Butler. Who else is in the house? I want to. I want to say. Uh, 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 who else is in here? Can you, can you see the people? Barbara Washington. Barbara Washington. Thank you so much. Uh, Octi Jack. O O Jacks. I think Octi. Felicia Cox is in the house. Who else is in here? Who else? Sarah in? Priscilla. Sarah Pris Priscilla. Say Sarah Priscilla. Uh, Pastor Deidre. Uh, who else is in here? Uh, Pastor Joe Taller Moore. Mary Listen. Jones. Mary Jones. Sheila Harlem. Sheila Harlem. Hey. That's my sister. She's my sister. Pastor Stevie T. I, Steve, Stephen T. Ivy. Pastor Stevie Robinson. Uh, who else is in in here? Barbara. You say Barbara Washington already. Hey, mom. My mom is Lakita uh, Rucker uh, 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 Stout. Uh, Katrina Robinson. Latoya Arnold. John Johnson. What's up, John? Uh, who else? Camille. Osiris. Bali. <laughs> I was gonna call. I was gonna call his original name. Sean Crutchfield. Uh uh who else is in here? Uh who else? Joel Pomfrey. Hey Minister Joel. Uh thank you guys. Thank everybody that came in. Uh, uh Evie Cook. Hey Evie. Uh who else? My sister in law Val Valerie. Valerie Brown. Marissa, Pastor Marissa, uh Pastor Kit Deloney. 
Who else? Uh, Patrice Bradford. Hey, had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Um, who else? Felicia Pryor, my cousin. Jonathan and Sonia, our Atlanta people. Our children in Atlanta. Uh, Tammy Abrams. Thank you, Tammy. Ebony Washington. Who else? Ain't ass. All right. Thank you guys so much. Hey, this is Prayer Week at Network of Believers. I want to I want to emphasize that. Why is it Prayer Week? Is because don't don't be like the people. Just call Jesus Jesus of Nazareth, and no good thing come out of Nazareth. This is what he's he's God is doing again. He wants us to connect in our prayer life, an intimate relationship with him. That's what we need, an intimate relationship, because there's going to be things downloaded in our spirit that we won't even be able to comprehend. If we are not connected, so but what the crowd has said is heard that down that none is unnecessary. Now, please hear me because I'm gonna say something very powerful and it might be offensive. I talked last night that the truth will offend for those of you that think that you can't. The church is so conscious of not offending, Jesus said, All will be offended. It is impossible that offenses not come. Listen to what I'm about to say to you. This is what I'm saying prayer life because of connection. Prayer life because you got to connect. Most of your battles is going to come from people that you look up to. It's going to be difficult for them to see you in any other place that they than what they've always seen you. That's okay. Don't you fight there. You pray because the enemy going to come with these petty scuffles trying to question who you are. Petty. I call them petty scuffles because you don't need to be fighting there. You need to be in prayer because the crowd is going to say it's not necessary. You know, all that stuff is not necessary, but you are looking for a divine intervention and you need this closeness with God through prayer. So even when the people that are close to you come and say something to defy what God has said to you, and it's going to happen. Jesus had it happen. He's the example. When he tells his disciples that I'm about to do something and I'm going to be put into the hand of sin for men and they're going to crucify Peter, who he had just blessed and say, blessed that that Peter gave him keys to the kingdom. He turned around. Peter says, I'm not going to let it happen. That was a doctrine of a devil. Anytime anybody speak anything contrary to what God has dropped in your as your destiny is a doctrine of the devil. That's why the people say the spirit speak expressly that in latter times, people are going to be a great falling way, uh, uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devil. We think that uh, uh, somebody with a, a black robe coming into our space uh, that we can say, oh, that's a devil worshiper. No. Peter is a prime example of what he's talking about. He had just blessed Peter. And then he tell Peter his destiny. Peter says it won't happen. He says, Peter, you were just speaking a doctrine of a devil to me after I just blessed you. Because anytime you could declare something that is contrary to my destiny in God, you are speaking against God in my life. And so that doesn't come from outsiders. That comes from insiders because the enemy wants you to believe what they say. Mm -hmm. So this is what you have to be aware of. That's why prayer is so significant. Prayer is so significant. Prayer life is so significant. That is your tool to all. That's the basic foundation. For anything else you want, and no matter how large the intervention you want, prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. All right. Are we done? We done. Bless you guys. This is Wednesday. Have a great week. Great week. Great week. Great week. Believe. I make choose, the choice. Make yeah. the choice to believe. I choose to believe. Stop seeing with the physical eyes and see with your spiritual eyes. Remember, my physical eyes is what I see through. My revelation is what I see with. I can declare it well. It is well. All right, we're out of here. Holla, thank you guys so much. Blessings, 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 and more blessings. This will be uploaded to YouTube not long from now, so you'll be able to watch it on YouTube as well. Pastor G at Network of Believers. Pastor G at Network of Believers. Now, let's do that again. Pastor G. Lady T. All right, where I am, where she's going to be also. All right, holla at you guys. Love you. Have a blessed day.